This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> Gary Styles and I'm a mother. Uh, I got asked a question on Instagram by Chris. He asked me, is it really worth buying an amp anymore? And I thought that's an interesting question in it. So the year 2023 got more choices of digital modelers than ever and probably about as many choices of tube amps as ever before as well as this kind of in-between modeling amps kind of world. So I thought maybe it'd make an interesting topic to kind of talk about and I think we should split this into a few different areas so the first question is are you intending to record the second question is are you intending to gig um, and there may be other questions I'm not sure anyway so if, if you're never intending to record you know using projects and all that sort of stuff and putting together demos then I would suggest actually probably a, a real amp is a little bit of an easier quicker and possibly even more enjoyable way to get results at home so for instance you know you buy yourself a vox ac15 um you plug it in and you know cord to to amp you've got a reverb on there and you just play and you have a really good time now i don't think there's really much experiences that can beat actually just playing a tube amp in a room or you know an amp in a room definitely it is a thing and you you kind of can tell this because when you go to record an amp um you lose so much and unless you're a real expert on this uh, so the the sound of an amp in a room is this kind of sort of holy grail that people try to uh get towards whatever they're doing but even with a, a mic on an amp in a room you you don't really get the same experience as you get by standing in a room with an amp playing even if it's not insanely loud um you get this kind of the the low stuff fills the room a bit uh you get this kind of incredible sense of dynamics 
you know, if it's a good amp. However, if you start trying to record an amp, like I say, there's a lot of stuff that can get lost then. And also, you know, you need to then factor in things like buying a microphone uh, and all of that sort of stuff. And I think that is really where modeling can uh, sort of take over and become a much more convenient, uh, a much simpler, and in a lot of ways, kind of cheaper way to, to get results. Um, for instance, if you think of someone like Steve Lukather, who decades ago was using Line 6 pods on, you know, professional recordings, there's a reason. And, you know, Joe Satriani, even on his latest album, using plugins, I think it's no longer really even essential to have an amp on recordings. It hasn't been for a while, but I think that's definitely the case these days. You hear about people like Pliny who maybe have never even owned an amp and they're like touring the world and stuff. So if you are recording, I think modeling might be the easiest way to get good results at home. For me, the, the thing that I rely on modeling for is to have like a reliable um, and predictable kind of tone at home. Because when I go to record a real amp, sometimes, you know, in the room, because it's louder, you don't notice as many imperfections in sort of like tuning and intonation and that sort of thing. And also, you don't really know what you're going to get at the end result until you've stopped playing the amp and gone back over to your computer and listened to the take. Sometimes if you're using like high gain tones or something like that, you can be a little bit surprised by the results. And also things like, you know, if you've got a click track going on in the room like this, you probably need some headphones or it's going to bleed through onto the amp. And, you know, you probably need a mic stand, a mic, an XLR, uh, the actual amp itself. So it can get a little bit more expensive to record a real amp at home is my suggestion. Or you could maybe get a load box. But yeah, if you're at home recording, Modeling may be the way to go. If you're at home and not thinking of recording, I think a tube amp is probably a more enjoyable experience, probably. Probably louder as well. So that might be something to, to factor in as well. Like, do you have to be quiet and stuff like that? Because if you have to be quiet with a tube amp, then you maybe consider something with either an attenuator or you have to factor in maybe buying an attenuator, maybe. The other thought that I had was around, are you intending to gig the thing? So. Here's the, the situation for me. I think up to a certain level, uh, so sort of if you're, if you're playing pub and club gigs, I think an amp really excels in those situations. And I think actually they're more fun. I think probably they sound better in general. Um, it's been my experience having attended gigs and, you know, having played gigs myself. I think the, the gigs that I can re really remember having a, a great time sort of playing in a pub situation like that or a club, I would have had an amp on stage. These kind of jam scenarios or maybe blues gigs or funk fusion gigs. I think in those situations, an amp really can um, be an important thing because in those smaller situations, you may not have a great house PA to be heard and be heard well, probably an amp. That's exactly what they kind of excel at, I think. I'm in a situation now where most of the gigs that I do are sort of functions or weddings. And unfortunately in those situations, if you turn up with an amp to one of these these days, they kind of look at you like you've bought a bag of tampons and they're like, what are you doing with this? It's disappointing in some ways and a bit of a, like, I don't understand how it happened. But for some reason, in my experience, a lot of people these days are a bit like, well, why don't you, haven't you turned up with a Kemper or something else? Um, why have you brought an amp? It's a bit of a weird situation. Um, and it, f for me as well, if I'm playing with sound people that I haven't played with before, or maybe if I know them, I know that I don't really like their work. I think for me, I don't necessarily always trust sound people to get a good sound out front if you're using a modeler. That's kind of the negative with a modeler live is that you're basically, your tone is completely in the hands of someone else. And sometimes they might do things like shelve off everything under 500 Hertz, which is disappointing and awful. But the convenience factor with the modeler, I think, is a thing to, to bear in mind. And if you're playing live, I think functions and stuff like that and having to use in-ears, then again, a modeler starts to come into its own. And especially if you see on, you know, kind of touring bands and stuff like that, a lot of them are using Kempers, Axe Effects and uh, Helixes and that sort of stuff called Cortex because basically it's, it's a kind of cost factor as well as consistency factor as well as remembering that sometimes real amps aren't reliable and i know that as someone here who has an amp here that is making big squeaky noises and i have another amp here which the reverb doesn't work on so 
modeling doesn't really have those issues in the same way it either works or doesn't um, generally I've found that my modeling stuff has been really reliable um, and up to this point as well I guess most of my amps have been but I bought and sold enough amps to know that basically in the room with an amp you get an incredible sensation I think a lot of the time uh, you know a special amp does I think really difficult to describe but when you go between modeling and a real amp in a room you definitely can tell a big difference and I think so if you're looking for inspiration without recording then for me I think probably the quickest way to inspiration I think I don't know if you agree with any of this or disagree something else to bear in mind you know the cost of the thing so modeling generally you can get the job done with an all-in-one box if you buy an amp if you bought a Fender Princeton or if you bought a Vox AC30 or an AC15 not only are they quite loud for home use in a lot of cases but also the amount of tones that you can get out of them is relatively limited without the help of other equipment so you might have you know a load of money invested in pedal boards and stuff like that um, you don't really have to go down that route if you go down modeling world um, again but it may it's one of those things where sometimes with the modeling stuff you kind of just have to accept that it's never really going to sound exactly like this amp in the room thing but you can trust that once it's recorded it's barely distinguishable for most people you know like i did a video a while back comparing what i thought was a great lone star sound in the room and then i compared it to an axe effects sound that i recorded and once i looked back at it i really kind of actually just preferred the axe effects sound um it's something about what happens once you've recorded the thing it seems like there's a lot of energy a lot of tone and stuff that is you know present in the room that doesn't really translate super well across to youtube and stuff like that so those are my thoughts really i think it's not essential to own an amp in 2023 it's kind of a nice to have um and i think there is definitely still i think some magic to some amps um it's not a situation where i turn the amps on that often at all but i'm also not in a situation where i necessarily want to be without one forever Although, you know, my daily drivers are modelers, I still think there is uh, there's something about just plugging into an amp and playing it. I, it's not really even like superstition or anything like that or anything that's like magic about a tube amp. It just is that once you play a guitar in a room with a speaker filling the sound of a room, that really does react quite differently to playing through a modeler through kind of uh, monitors in the room. It just is a different thing the physics of it is different once they're recorded of course i think most of us probably accept that those things are now as close as they've ever been and possibly to the point of being indistinguishable with things like the quad cortex kemper and tonex um, and axe effects and helix as well there's you know for recorded stuff it's not essential that you have an amp for that anymore i think and i also think it's quicker more reliable and quieter to use a modeler in those cases let me know your thoughts in the comments are you a tube amp guy i'm definitely someone who still really likes plugging into a tube amp and as i say if i could uh, pick playing a tube amp on certain gigs you know if it's a uh, sort of bluesy fusiony um, pub club kind of gig i definitely like the idea of rocking up to one of those with a tube amp um, versus turning up with a modeler i think let me know your thoughts in the comments thanks for stopping by Cheers. Ow.